Okay. So, welcome to the third topic for the TC seminar. Okay. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone wherever you are in the globe. I am your third speaker. I am Carissa Valaria. Okay. So, okay. so, my topic will be types of research design in qualitative research. So, during this uh, session, we will talk about the different types of research designs used in qualitative research. So, first off, um, I will give you an outline. Okay. So, the presentation will cover the following topics. First is, what do we mean by qualitative research designs? What are types of research designs in qualitative research? Um, the first one, two, three, four are the most common. Okay, then I just added some of the things I like to do. And I said recommended my students to do the previous years, my advices to do the previous years, because I find it easier to do. Okay, I'll explain later why. Okay. Then, how to select the appropriate research design. Some of you already asked about this. Okay. Then next, the advantages and disadvantages for each design. So you can already decide for yourself if that's the design for you. But bear in mind, I'm only talking about qualitative research design. Okay. So the examples, if I have time, I will show you some uh, of the studies pertaining to the designs in mentioned and of course future directions from this topic okay. okay so the first is the definition of research design okay for the definition of research design um when you talk about research design this is the one that provides a framework for the research process okay including you the, uh, the the selection of data gathering methods how to identify the sample how to analyze and then how to interpret so the design per se is the method that you will use when you're going to do your qualitative research okay, okay. so what's the importance of research design in qualitative research so the research design, it's crucial in qualitative research because it's the foundation of the entire research process. So you have to know what you're going to use because it guides you. Okay. Uh, it ensures that the question is, uh, the research question is properly answered and the data that you will get is relevant and accurate and of course valid. Okay. Okay. So some reasons clear framework because it helps you organize your ideas and plan your research process. You, you create an outline when you know your design. The It ensures validity and reliability. <clears throat> As I've mentioned, the goal is to make sure your data, your information is valid <clears throat> and reliable because you followed the steps, the rigorous steps uh, during the data gathering process. Okay, saves time and resources because when you collect the resources, once you know the design, there's a crucial step that you have to follow, a step-by-step -step rigorous process. So if you skip that, of course, it's more timely. But if you follow that path, you, you won't be, you have to know this because you have limited time in your academics to finish your paper. So you have to follow strictly that timeline. Otherwise, ayun, it defeats the purpose. Okay? And it enhances credibility. So uh, because if you follow a method, yun nga, there's a strict process, a scientific process. And because of that process, it, it enhances the, the trustworthiness of your research. Okay? So... When you follow a research design, it is important because it shows that you're following a clear framework and then 
you're sure that your research is valid and reliable and it enhances your credibility, your work's credibility. Excuse me. Okay. So as I've mentioned, we will be discussing uh, these types of research design. The first four, yun yung pinaka-common. Okay? So... Uh, first is yung phenomenology. I'll discuss it one by one kasi I have to explain to you first the definition of each, the advantages and disadvantages of each, and then last is how to do it. Okay? So you can take down notes. So first off, ito, general lang, general backgrounder lang. I'll discuss the first four. So phenomenology, it's a research design that focuses on exploring and describing the meaning of an experience as it is lived by the participants. So, quality term participants. When you see the word phenomenology, root word phenomenon, so you're trying to study a phenomena, okay? Something that is unusual, something that is not regularly experienced by everyone. It is subjective in nature because only few people experience that phenomenon. For example, we are all nurses here, but not all of us are nurses working in, let's say, uh, your expertise is in critical care unit. So not all of us are critical care unit nurses. Therefore, only the nurses working in the CCU can explain what happens to them day to day in the CCU because they work there. So it's unique to them. It's a phenomenon only applicable to CCU nurses. Okay. Next word I want you to remember is lived experiences. So when you see lived experiences, that's phenomenology right away. Okay. Lived, na, buhay sila, na-experience nila. They've experienced it day in, day out. So they know what they're talking about. Okay? Nobody can question that experience because it is subjective to them. It's only their experience. No one can question one's experience. If I tell you I'm sad, you can't question that I'm sad. Because... I'm the one who knows my feelings, okay? So no one can question that. That's the beauty of qualitative research. You cannot question the feelings of someone because feelings are not really seen. I can hide my feelings, but if I verbalize that out, that makes it real, okay? So it aims to uncover the essence or structure of phenomenon by examining individual experiences, so, when you do this, it has to be an in-depth interview or an observation. When we say in-depth interview, later I'll discuss what that is. But from the term in-depth, malalim. You have to delve in deeper regarding the experience. You can't ask yes or no questions. It has to be open-ended. You have to explore their experiences. Okay? And then, you analyze the data the information to identify common themes and patterns. <clears throat> so, for example, in Feno, you have five CCU nurses. You ask each one of their experience. Okay? And then from their experience, you will begin to imagine what is the life of CCU 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nurse. And then you check, are there similarities when they wake up, when they're working, when they go home? And then those patterns, those are what you, the experiences, depending on your question, but the, the general question is, what are the lived experiences of CCU nurses? So when they answer that, you begin to see, you imagine, oh, a CCU nurse experiences these five traits, for example. That's what you see. So that now becomes the pattern or your themes. We'll discuss that more later. Next, grounded theory. Uh, I would not advise this as your at your level, because um, eh, pang PhD ito. 
uh, this is what I used during my PhD. Why? Because, for example, in Feno, you already ask their lived experiences. Imagine asking them four, four rounds of Feno. That's GT. Okay? So, <clears throat> here, di ba, you all had your funda, your foundations in nursing. We studied the different nursing theories. So, this is how you make a theory. You have to prove then four times worth that, yes, this is what nurses go through at the CCU. This is, so, theory siya. The theory that I created was, uh, um in my PhD, is nursing intuition uh use of nursing intuition in nursing education so my premise was that um faculty or teachers or professors have that have gained intuition already in such a way that by mere being in the class and knowing the student and depending on how the student reacts to certain um parameters in the classroom or in the way they interact with the teacher they can already feel that gut feel that intuition that either something is wrong something needs to be done or uh some the teacher can do something to mediate to modify what is happening with each one of the students so uh it was very time consuming. I really do not recommend this for the master students. Okay. So it's a systematic process of collecting, coding, and analyzing data to identify categories and themes. So in phenomenal phenomenology, you have themes. In grounded theory, you have categories, you have themes. Okay. And then there are three types of coding. <laughs> So like like I told you, in Feno you have one theme. I mean one process of, uh, coding for themes. In GT you have to do it three stages, a uh, four stages. Sorry. Okay. So, and just to tell you, so grounded theory is like four times Feno. Okay. Yes. In okay. So ethnography. Earlier, one of your classmates asked about ethnography. So ethnography, it's a research design that involves the study of a specific cultural group or community. So usually you would see ethnos uh, pag, um, culture. Uh, in the Philippines, we have a lot of, uh, how do you say that kind of group? Um, uh, Kunyar, Dumagat, Aita. How do you, I forgot how you, you call them. Uh, so, indigenous? Indigenous. Um, how do you call that? Um, Minorities? <laughs> the, ano, Tribes? Uh, parang, uh, they are, they are, ethnic, yung, ano, groups. Yung, ethnic groups. Thank you so much. The ethnicities. The different ethnicities we use ethnography because we study their culture. Again, I do not recommend this for a master's thesis. Why? Uh, in ethnography, if your panel will be reading your method, yung how you're doing the ethnos, minimum three months, three months that you are enculturated with that culture, you stay there for three months. Nag-immerse kayo. You immerse yourself with the culture. So, for example, uh, for the, ano yun dito sa kabanatuan yung, uh, Badjao. Diba, before, there was an influx of Badjao people coming to kabanatuan. You cross the street, Badjao, Badjao, Badjao. So, uh, so, we just see them as those begging for alms or whatever. Pero when you go to their place, you you live with them, you sleep with them, you eat with them. What they do in the morning, if they will um make... Diba? In community health nursing, we go to the community, we visit them. Uh, one time, 
Uh, we went to the community. For example, uh, their practice is that if there's a baby and then there are a lot of people there, they will place, place this red thread on the on the forehead. And then you as a nurse, because you know, we are scientific, we know that there's no rationale why we will put a red thread there. Um, you restrain yourself from removing the red thread because you are going to insult their practice, their beliefs. So, <laughs> ayun, that's something that you have to do. Restrain yourself. You keep your bias again towards yourself. You cannot react negatively. Or if they offer you food, something that you're not uh, familiar with, you have no choice but to accept it. Okay, another thing. Uh, I forgot which uh, ethnic group that is. This is their practice. Well, okay, a tribe in <clears throat> an Aborigine tribe in Africa. This is their practice. In Africa, ba yun? or China? Oh, wait, you, I, if you're familiar, you correct me, huh? I, I'm, I'm, I always mistake one of the two. Eh? One tribe, what they do, the before they get married, they have one of them, the girl, to prove her virginity. The, 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 the family has to test the girl, <laughs> so they have to use the girl before they get married. I forgot if that's in Africa or in China. The the sec doc parang Ethiopian. No, I, I, basta parang may basta, basta you're you're familiar Opo, with the practice. <laughs> Opo. So see, no matter how you are. Weirded out by that thought. It um that that's what ethno does. You become enculturated with their culture, with their practice. And then yung ethno, you describe it. Your you describe your experience that your experience residing with them. Uh, but of course, you have to go to uh, the and the process here is long because you have to go to the IP groups to for the barangay head to endorse you to that specific group. Otherwise, you won't be let in. That's one. You got to have to get this um, permission from the barangay, uh, from the IP, um, NIP, NIP, National Indigenous Protect People, something, something. So, ayun, that's one thing. Then next, you have to be endorsed by the barangay. And then, ayun, Eh, siyempre, you know, Filipinos are very welcoming or very uh, hospitable. Really, They will really <laughs> offer you things. So unless you're not that adventurous, I would not advise ethno. Kasi if, kunyari, you said you did ethno and then one week ka lang doon, I won't believe that you did ethno. Kasi it's kulang. One day, well, one week is not enough for you to immerse yourself with the community people. Okay, so uh, there, that's ethno. Okay, so uh, case study. So case study, we're all nurses, we study cases. So it's an in-depth study of a particular uh, individual or a group or a situation. So there's a case, you read on it. Uh, yeah. So there are ways of doing it. You, you can get interviews, you can observe, and then you can have the documents to study. So case, as in literal case, okay? And then you merge all the data together to come up with a report. So yun, case study. Now later I'll discuss to you narrative analysis or narrative inquiry. Okay. And then participatory action research. Later I'll discuss that. Nami na ako nasabi. Okay. <clears throat> Mayroon pa tayong specifics. Okay. So as I've mentioned for each of the qualitative design, I'll discuss to you first the definition then the advantages and disadvantages. Then last is how to do it. Okay? So first off, pheno. So sa phenomenology, as I've already mentioned, it's a design that focuses on exploring and describing the meaning of an experience as it is lived by the participants. Again, red ball pen there. As it is lived by the participants. So, Keyword, lived experience equals phenomenology. Okay? 
the essence. Okay, I I, th- I think I didn't focus on the word essence earlier. So when we say essence, when the reader reads your phenomenology, you have to prove that there's the essence. What is the essence? Okay, so for example, my one of my pheno papers is uh, the lived experiences of nurses who witnessed uh death in the eyes of a of loving uh who witnessed who student nurses who witnessed death in the clinical area okay <clears throat> so what is the essence there so the essence there is what made them uh uh dun na coin before ano before sino si miss ano miss universe pia before Pia words back said what was her you know beautiful with a beautiful with a something heart uh, that that I will I want to tell the universe that I am something something with a heart okay so yung research ko wa yung research ko with my students was Death in the eyes of a compassionate nurse. So the essence there is uh, compassionate nursing occurs during the time of um, when you experience loss. Okay. So yun yung essence ng study na despite the death, the student is able to maintain the compassion and respect for the dying. Yun, that's the essence. Some people how to how to we have what you call um tawag dun? eidetic symbol. E I uh, sorry, chat ko na lang. Eidetic. Okay. Ay, nawala kasi chat. Eidetic. Okay, when we say eidetic symbol, when you look at that symbol, it tells you something about your study. So, yung ano namin doon, I, I don't know if I can show it. I should have prepared pala the pictures. So, the eidetic symbol we prepared there was this um nurse, syempre may cap. And then merong uh, yung yung heart. Di ba may heart yung ganun? Yung lab-dab, lab-dab. So, yung yung beginning heart niya was uh, was was full. Full yung heart. And then yung end niya, ano, dark na yung heart. Meaning wala na siya. Okay. So, parang yun yung explanation namin na Life and death, the nurse is there. Yeah. Siyempre, you have to explain it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, what are the advantages? <clears throat> okay. So, in-depth understanding of individual experiences. You can understand what they're feeling what because you have to ask them to explain it uh, re- uh the the gravity of the explanation has to be uh, ano madami madami kang ma-explore dun sa sinasabi okay you provide a rich and detailed data because you just can't say what did you feel and then they will tell you sad you just can't write sad can you ex- explain further or uh, di ba nag-psych tayo so you you probe and ask them what else did they feel make it a deeper deeper conversation okay so hindi po because uh the for everyone's information for an interview to be considered credible and valid it has to be at least 30 minutes long to 1 hour or more why because you're getting to know each other it could just be like 15 minutes already and then the next 15 minutes is Q&A so i don't think that's valid so Creswell said 30 minutes to 1 hour at least for an interview to be valid, okay? Okay. And then, 
uh, because of that rich, detailed inform interview, you can create a comprehensive description of the themes. Mm. Ah, wait lang. Mute ko lang yung iba, ha? Okay. Okay. Wala. Okay, next. Um, ano to? Uh, the negative, the, the disadvantage. Ayan. Oh, hit here. Bakit ay mag-click? How do I do this? Bakit na wala laser? Ayun ang laser. Findings may lack generalizability. When we say generalizability, if I interview, remember, during the first uh, lecture, when we say generalizability, we when we interview a sample, that sample is a representation of everyone. We can generalize it. Okay. But for quality, that's not our goal. Generalizability is not our goal. So we cannot generalize the findings. So like I've said, if it's CCU nurses, it just applies to CCU nurses. You can't apply it to ICU nurses. You can't apply it to ward nurses because their experiences may not be the same. Interpretations may be subjective, which is true because an experience will always be subjective. Who's, who experienced it? Not you, them. So it is subjective to them. It's only them who has that experience. Nobody else can have that experience. Okay. Time-consuming. Why? Because ang mahirap dito is analyzing the, the words they said. Kasi um, the statements can have different meanings. So for example, if I said, if I asked you, why did you select Wesleyan to be your uh, your school for MA? Why did you select your school? That's my question. Kasi ang, ang title natin kunyari is Lived Experiences of Whoop. Mandy L students. Eh yun yung gusto kong malaman. Your experiences as a whoop Mandy L student. So uh give me an answer. I look at the chat box. <clears throat> okay. Anyone, what is your why did you choose uh whoop Mandy L as your master for your masters? Ay. Oh yes, Miss Martinez. Convenient. So, for yes? me kasi, um, I am moved with the mission and vision of uh, WUP because I am into volunteer works and um, reading po the, the words dun sa pinaka W, transforming lives. Ano ba yung doc? Yung, building people, transforming uh, building lives. Building people, building people, transforming lives. And then I've been like scrolling yung mga ano yung mga post that you are into helping yung mga alumni yung mga ano sabi ko i believe this is the best school for me and as time goes on sabi ko i will never regret that i chose WUP kahit po nakapasa ako sa UP kasi doc sobra grabe talaga yung pagka sa amin ngayon para na kaming mga naging perfectionist na laging strive for excellence yun talaga doc as in Okay. So, ayan. Yung mga tipo ni Miss Martinez, yun yung mga ma magandang interviewin kasi one question, madami ng sagot, right? So, let's break it down. Pero meron din kasi mga answer sa chat box, okay? So, the question was, why did you select WP as your MA school? Okay. So, dito, una, convenient. Recommended lang by friend. Convincing pa. <laughs> Ako ba yun? Okay. Can be done online. Convenient. Influence and encouragement of friends. Because alumni siya. Okay. And then, madami din yung nasabi na si Miss Martinez. Wait ha. I will open a... I'll stop share muna ko. Pause share. And then, I will... Paano ba to? Stop muna pala. At hindi ko nakikita ang aking windows. Okay, game. So, 
<clears throat> okay. So, lalakihan ko lang. Why did you select whoop as your school for money L? So, oops, huwag galawin. Okay. For Mandy L. So, ang mga, bakit ba ganun? Ayan. Ayan, lahat nakikita na. So, may sumagot ng convenience, referred, alumni, uh, ano pa? What was the answers given? Uh, because of the core values, sabi ni Ms. Martinez. Then, oh, example, ayan, madami. Okay. So, when you are going to do, actually, uh, para lang masabi ko sa inyo, uh, here, um, so, sabi nyo, convenience, referred, alumni, for values, ano pa? influence. Okay. So, these already are <clears throat> the these are the answers, right? So, when you do this, uh, you can already create your uh, sub-themes. So, con you have to make a complete statement. Convenience for selecting school. Referred by friends and relatives when selecting school. Yan. Uh, hope is known to them because they are alumni. So, you see, meron ka ng statement dito. And then you break this down. Uh, magiging formula niyan is sentence, ay, paragraph, sentence, phrase, and then the theme. Okay? So, ang end, ano natin, is the phrase. Okay. So, that's how you do your coding. So, can you imagine all of this? Uh, so, ano pa ba? Convenience, referred, alumni. So, dito sa... How do I make another table? Hindi ko nakikita yan eh. There. Okay. So... Question, dito sa limang nakalagay dito, ano sa tingin nyo ang uh, which matches? Kasi may convenience, may core values, may alumni, uh, may referred alumni influence. Influenced by peers to study. Okay, sige, look. Keywords lang, referred, influence, uh, ako na magsasabi, never mind. So, referred and influence because here, oh, when they were selecting school, ayan. so, ang end product ni dito ay whoop man DL students selected the institution as it has been referred and as it as they have been either influenced by peers or they had been referred to the institution so yan yung magiging last statement nyo last, uh, that would be your description of the theme so ah uh, ang magiging theme nyo na dyan is ang common denominator ng lahat ng yan is lalagay ko na lang dito ah, but that's not ano reasons why whoop is chosen as Mandy L. School. Yan. Yan lahat yung yan lahat yung all the five, and this now becomes your 
theme. If you can, and so what are the reasons? Convenience referred ganyan yan. Okay? So if you noticed, uh, why is it? So the reason, just the only reason why I explain this is because uh, <clears throat> the only reason why I explain this is because ano ba to? Um, of the word time consuming. <laughs> so I'm just trying to say that uh, when you analyze, that's how you do the coding. You have to interpret and uh, the, give so much interpretations to whatever your participant answers. Okay. So it's really time consuming. Okay, so next. So how do we do this? So first, you determine your research question and your objectives. And then, um, how do you do that? By uh, understanding first your general problem, your grand tour question. The, okay, so let go ulit yun. Grand tour question, Okay. When we talk about a grand tour question, it's general. It's the mother of all questions of your paper. So what's grand tour? Um, what are the lived experiences of blank, of whoever you're going to study? Okay? And then, saka na follow-ups. Then, select the participants. When you select the participants or sampling technique in your FENO, it's always purposive. Okay, why? You have a purpose. Because they're the only ones who will fit the criteria of your study. If you want CCU nurses, then your criteria should be um, <clears throat> CCU nurses. If, for example, you want Filipino nurses, so criteria is Filipino, um, CCU nurses working in wherever country you're, you're at now. Yun, tatlo. Minimum of three criteria when doing the selection process. Okay? Okay. So, you conduct in-depth interviews or observation to collect your data. The in-depth interview, I prefer in-depth interview because you cannot really gather too much information when you're just looking at the person. So, in-depth interview, as in, you know, and me, my style is like what I'm doing now, conversational lang. And then, because if it's too rigid, they just, for example, <clears throat> What did you do at 9 a.m.? Uh, what is your time like during the day? And then they'll tell you, I eat, I wake up, I I do the endorsement. <laughs> okay? So you just talk to them and then add more questions as you see fit if you're not getting the answers you you that you are that you have to get. Okay. Then you analyze by identifying themes, patterns, and commonalities. Before, I was old school when I first did it uh, during my master's. I really was very angry at my advisor that time because um, he told me how to do it, but I didn't get it that much. So <laughs> I did it by using yellow pad. I like the yellow pad. I kept on writing there everything that I would find familiar. And then later on, I realized if I was wrong, I would just erase it. And then, you know, it's too messy already. I had a colleague uh, sa UST. What they do, they use the cartolina. <laughs> so they have a bigger handwriting. And then they post it on the wall. And then they, they cross out theme. You connect the dots like that. So they would just write like that if there were things that are similar. And then I realized Excel is your friend. <laughs> because in Excel, you type the first few words, it automatically generates the same words listed above, right? So if you know, Excel is your friend. And then there are also other products that are uh, that can be utilized. However, it's paid. So if you have $99 to spare just for the analysis, go ahead. But I do Excel. Okay. Then develop a comprehensive description. So what we did earlier, we already explained it. And then validate the findings through member checking. Okay, please note this word, member check. What do we mean by member check? Member check is when 
you, the researcher, goes back to the participants and then you show them, Ma'am, sir, uh, this is what um came out during my findings. Could you tell me whether this is correct or not? Is this what you experienced? The And then they will tell you, yes, exactly. So your participants validated that what you did find out, although not just from him, but from all the people you interviewed were correct. So that's member checking. That's one way to validate your paper. Then you write, uh, the formula, what I do is, formula. Number one is to identify the theme. Then number two is to describe the theme. Number three is to quotations. Quotation, direct, sorry. Direct quotation from the participant. Example, P1. I never like I never planned on pursuing master's degree, but I was given a scholarship. Mamaya, wait lang ay sa chat box ko ilalagay. And then, um, citation from journals to back up your statement. And then, here. Okay. So there, that's my formula when I'm explaining, when I'm presenting the findings. First off is your, uh, how do you say that? You, I, so, syempre, nakalagay doon yung theme one. And then you describe the theme, you explain it. And then the direct quotation from the, sorry, my five pa pala. Five is explain the whole thing. <clears throat> then <clears throat> so theme one describe the theme and then according to p1 i never blah 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 then yung number four cit citation similarly in a study by the guzman kunyari lang yan uh, not all students who pursue higher degrees uh, pursue their studies because it was their choice. Okay? And then explain. You wrap it all up. Okay? And that's how you do the uh, explanation. Not just for fair, no, in all. <clears throat> Basta quality, that's how you present your findings. Okay. Oh, it would also help, for example, you have 10 participants. You have to prove to the audience to the readers, that majority of your participants said that. So, 6 out of 10, never 5 out of 10. Why? Because what about the other 5? That means they don't agree. So, always 6 out of 10 or ang ilalagay. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 or all. Now, what will you do if it's 5 and below? That means that excerpt of yours or that theme of yours should not be a theme because not everyone experienced it. It is not a recurring theme or pattern. Okay? So only those six and above that are similar experiences should be narrated. Okay? I hope that's clear. Okay. Dal-dal ko kasi dami pa. Okay. Grounded theory. Okay, so I already told you, uh, grounded theory, you're there to create a theory. Okay. So the focus is how individuals perceive and interpret their experiences and how that experience shapes their behavior. So it's an analogy of why they act that way. If It's an, an analogy of how their experiences changes who they are so it's a deeper understanding of someone's experience so 
grounded in the root cause. Grounded. Okay. Theory. Okay. I eraser. Okay. Next. Advantages. So, yeah. systematic and rigorous approach to data collection because it's a process. The resulting theory is based on empirical data and can provide insights into the participants' experiences. And you can make it a new theory or expand an existing theory. Remember, uh, the first, one of the grounded theory that is very familiar to everyone here is Kubler-Ross's Dabda. It started as a GT and it's now a theory. Okay. Disadvantages. I time consuming. I was I was a scholar, but I really had to do this. It's a good thing I was not working during that time. So I had all the time in the world to just focus on my doctorate. Okay. Now, because you're the one creating that theory, your explanations can uh you can be biased. And you can add that there. However, we can't do anything about that. Um, one thing you have to do when you want to rid yourself of bias is to do bracketing. When we say bracketing, bracketing, when we say bracketing, you write down all your experiences about a certain topic. So, for example, um, Intuition, that was my study. So everything I know about intuition, I write, I wrote it down and I did that before I did the data gathering. Why? Because before I did the data gathering, I wrote, already wrote it down, right? So during the data gathering and then someone says it, I was not biased because I already wrote it. It's not my fault that it came out again. Okay. So that's bracketing. Now, that is before, huh? before you start the interview process. Another thing you do is you can do pala is bridling. What is the difference of bracketing and bridling? So when we talk about bridling, um, this is before, during, and after you write about your own thoughts. You have this memo. Some people call it memoing. Okay, so you do memoing. You write down, you write down, this is what I felt before. Now, during, ay, she kept on talking about intuition as if it was a uh, it was a very negative subject. So, I just wrote it down. I do not agree. Kunyari, ganun. And then after, uh, after the study is done, you again write down your reflex, like reflexivity process. The reflexivity process. So, the reflexivity process is after the paper. You write down everything that you learned. The, this is where you write what you learned, what you what you re-learned, and what you unlearned. So, what you learned, bago. What you re what you relearned, you for you you knew about it before, but you just relearned it now. What you unlearn is what you thought to be correct before and you prove to be wrong. Okay, that's what you write. Okay. So usually when your panel asks you, how do you rid yourself of bias? How do you prevent the bias? If you're quali, you say bracketing, riddling, or memoing. Okay? Disadvantages. Ayan, sinabi ko na yan. Then again, lack generalizability. But what's the problem? Quali is not for us to generalize. Okay? Next. So, how do you do this? So, open mind. Focus on the research question. Interview. You observe and other methods. What are other methods? Uh, data and... Um, <laughs> data analysis papers uh, related literature okay then you do coding 
then you categorize, then you make themes, and then you make concepts, four layers. And then you make your own model. That's why if you notice, if you've watched um panels where I'm the pa where I'm the panel, lagi kong minamali yung model nila from the beginning na proposal because uh, I'm not sure if I placed it here. Um they already have this proposal palang, they have already boxes, circles, lines, etc. A goal of quali is to build a theory. Theory building ang qualitative. Theory proving ang quanti. So you don't use a theory pag quali ka. Conceptual framework yan. So your goal is to create your own model at the end of a grounded theory. Okay? Then you validate the theory through member checking. You go back to them if they agree with that theory. That step-by-step -step process that you did, you inform that to them. And then when your participant said, yes, 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 your research is valid. Okay? And then you write the results, including supporting quotes and other data. I already showed you the formula. Okay, next. Okay, ethnography. Okay, I already said, it's cultural group. In-depth understanding of their beliefs, values, behaviors, and social norms. So when you go there, these are the things you have to take note of. No matter how you disagree or no matter how absurd they may be. We have to respect because that's their culture. Okay. So advantages. The uh, Okay. Detailed and comprehensive understanding. Ah, kaya pala sila ganon. Yun. You'll have that eureka moment when you do the uh, ethno. Can uncover hidden or implicit cultural values because it's not known to everyone. It's because you're immersed yourself. That's why you uncovered it. Okay? And then rich and nuanced data through observation and participant observation because if i i can't ask what i don't know right so if i just ask you what are your practices i can tell you what i know but for example something that i don't think needs to be shared i won't answer you that but if you observe it and then you learned it because you observed it. Ayun, you get a new set of information. So like I said, yung, uh, yung, eto, Africa na to, sure na ako dito. They have to show during the first night of marriage that the white sheet, okay, new marriage between man and woman, the clean set of beddings, white sheet, then the next day they have to to hang that white sheet that is filled with that is stained with blood what does that mean it proves to the entire tribe i married a virgin and i'm the first yun so my wife is clean when i took her yun so that's their practice okay so disadvantages um Requires significant amount of time. Like I mentioned, minimum is three months. Okay. If you're maarte like me, <laughs> I don't suggest this to you. Okay. I cannot survive eating the, you know, the food that they might serve. I'm honest. <laughs> okay. Challenging to maintain objectivity and avoid researcher bias because we're a nurse. Um... Like to thread that before um so of course we were doing a medical mission and then we were helping the kids and the older people and then they kept putting the thread thing. So ako naman, I tried to I took the cue from one of the teacher the the health workers by saying uh, accord sa siyensya, hindi naman yang ano tapos uh, 
<laughs> they kept removing it but um i could see witness that they were offended by the people removing the red thread so ayun if you're the researcher you want to your goal is to get info so do not be biased and do not be so transparent as to say yuck okay or what's that yeah okay. again it may not be generalizable because culture to culture is different everyone knows that okay so how do you do this i already told you first off you have to go to the uh ips the national indigenous people the protecting community and then the barangay and then uh you have to gain the trust and relationship otherwise they won't share with you they won't ask you to come reside with me okay then Observe the participants in their daily activities. Observe, as in watch them. You're not a guest. If they wash their clothes, you wash the clothes with them. If they're cooking, you cook with them. If by cooking, that means catching their own chicken and um, boiling the chicken to remove the feathers, you do that as well. Okay, So that's your way of immersing yourself with the culture okay so conduct interviews and collect other forms of data such as artifacts or documents then analyze by making themes so what are the themes you can create here so eating practices uh religious practices uh marriage practices etc family familial duties and responsibilities those are things it's about the, the values, their beliefs, their system. Yeah. That's what you write in. I know that's what you write here in ethnography. Okay. And then last, you have to understand. Develop an understanding of the group or community and uh, present the findings. And by the way, <clears throat> your paper may be read by the people you're with. So make sure when you write it, it's respectful and accurate. Not because of your interpretation, but because of when you write, excuse me, do not write your interpretation. You write what they explained. Okay? And because you have, you know, cross-check with them. It, this is what I found. Is this correct? And, okay? Okay, case study. Okay, so uh, as I've mentioned, uh, in-depth examination of a specific individual group or phenomena. Goal is to provide the comprehensive analysis. So what you interview or group and then what you read, you present in a report form, case study. Advantages. Okay, so allow for detailed and in-depth analysis. Insights into complex phenomena, uh, generating hypotheses and theories for future research. So, sa case study, I find it ideal. For example, um, before, uh, Kawasaki disease, only one. So, you report only one. Uh, nung time nung COVID, the earlier researchers, they wrote about the first people who had COVID. But then that's why we found out about the alpha, beta, delta, uh, gamma variants, Omicron variant va variants is because of case study. Okay. okay, so disadvantages again may not that's the weakness of quality talaga. We do not generalize. So that's kind of implied. Okay. Time consuming. Bias and subjectivity. Yes, that could happen because you have your own. Yes, okay. I understand. Oh, dal -dal ko kasi 10 I'm not even half. Okay. Okay. Guidelines. Okay. Define the research question and select the case or cases. Collect the data, whether that's interviewed, observation, and document. 
Okay, then look at the themes and patterns and then you present the report. Okay, and then implications to theory and practice. You have to show yung case as a report. Ito, uh, narrative analysis. This one I like. Here, uh, keyword for me is storytelling. Stories, sorry, stories. So, in Feno, it is lived experiences. In narrative inquiry, narrative analysis, we present it as a story. So, what's a story? A story, if you... When we learn that during grade school, a story tells you about something. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So therefore, when I tell my advices, you have to present your paper in such a way that it tells a story. There's a timeline from beginning until the end. So, why is it easy? Because it's already the participant who tells you the themes. Because, excuse me, the, it's the participant who already discusses to you. Uh, tell me about your, your, experience as a flight nurse. Oh, so they'll tell you, how did you become a flight nurse? Ganyan. And then how are you now as a flight nurse? So from the time that they became or even attempted to be a flight nurse until they're practicing as a flight nurse, that's it. That's your theme. Before entering nursing school, entering nursing school, graduating, selecting um, selecting place of work, practicing as flight nurse. Ayun na. Ayun na themes mo. Diba? Direct. It shows you that storyline. So, instead of themes, you're presenting stories. Um, It's like the journey. <laughs> the journey of someone's life that you're that you're sharing. Okay. So, pattern themes, ayan, pero storytelling yung manner of presentation. Advantages, okay, can reveal under, ito rin ba yun? Okay. Exploring individual and social identity construction. So, basically, it just tells you the story. Uh, Ulit-ulit. It's not generalizable, extensive time, uh, subjective because you in, in, incorporate your own explanation. <clears throat> so, transcribe narrative such as the life histories or personal experiences or stories. And then you identify patterns. Pero it's easy kasi your questions already are the patterns. Eh. Okay. Coding system to organize and categorize. Yan. Then, interpret the findings, provide a detailed description. Okay, next is photo voice. One of my favorites. Okay. For participatory action research, um, this is photo voice. Okay, so it combines photography with group discussions to give voice to individuals or communities who are often marginalized or excluded from decision-making process. It involves participants taking photographs that represent their experiences and perspectives. Okay, so photo plus voice. Photo means picture, voice means, you know, when I look at that photo, it speaks to me. It tells me what I want to convey. So imagine, okay, imagine you're in a canteen, okay? And then, nakalagay doon sa side where you, you know, clay go, clean as you go. You put your plates, you put your utensils, and then doon sa right tray, you put the leftovers. Okay. So, we did an experiment. Day one, we already took note of the number or the weight of leftovers. Day two, we already placed the picture 
dun sa leftovers, diba? tray 1, tray 2, tray 3. <clears throat> sa tray 3, we place the picture of a child who was eating out of a trash can. Imagine, a child eating out of a trash can. So we noted from the time that we placed the picture how much leftover food was there. So there, it was obvious that there was a gradual decrease in the, in the leftovers because that picture spoke to them. That's photo voice. It enhances cultural change, policy, policy change. Yeah. Okay, so that's photo voice. So, advantages and disadvantages. So, empowerment because earlier we mentioned marginalized. They cannot speak for themselves. Visual representation. Your eyes already explains the issue at hand. So, yun. Ang daming nagugutom. Pero here you are throwing so much. So, so before, nauso yung, I think, uso pa rin hanggang ngayon, the, the only rice. So, that's why, if you notice, companies like Mang Inasal, they already offer, for a time already, not just now, uh, the option na uh, not only rice. Yung, yung one cup lang. Because nga of that experiment. And that experiment was brought to Congress and then that co the Congress already mandated that dun sa mga restaurants about the only rice. So limited na yung spillage or leftovers. Community engagement because in the community, for example, the, the basura is too mabantot and but Everybody is affected by it. So, kasi di ba, you always see the bawal umihi dito. But then, um, you place a different picture there about uh, yung the future. If pagpatuloy mo, ganyan, parang ganun. So, mag-change yung mindset ng tao just because of that photo. So usually, you use photo voice if you want to address uh, issues in of social, cultural, or political significance. Usually politics. But sa nursing, ayan, social, cultural. We can do that. It's flexible. Okay. Uh, when is photo voice also, for me, I utilize photo voice, uh, personal study ko ito. When I lost my child, uh, my first child, I did a study for photo voice. I asked permission from all those people who shared their similar mothers who lost their children. Uh, so I asked them to send me pictures that would describe their feeling when they experience loss. And then I ask them to give it the photos that they sent a title along with their explanation. So why do I recommend this to my students or my advices? Because who gave the title? <laughs> the participant. Who gave the explanation? The participant. <laughs> so, di ba? And then all you have to do is to organize it and present it in a manner that's thesis worthy. That's why it's called participatory action research because it's not just you doing the right thing. It's you and the participant. Disadvantages. Technical expertise. Because, mind you, in photo voice, uh, there are styles in showing photos. My rule of thirds, my middle, my um, near and far. Okay, so you have to give them a crash course tutorial on taking pictures. You just can't just take a picture. You have to teach them the stylings. Otherwise, it's it you won't focus on the image that you're or the 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 information you're trying to convey. 
Okay. Limited scope. Uh, limited only because of the experience. Okay. You can't really see the entire story. Ethical consideration. Sometimes they may take photos that is very sensitive. Like I've told you before, social, cultural. Another study that I, me and my students did was HIV. So of course, we cannot disclose the names of HIV. You know that's bawal. So um, aside from you know um putting the the blurring of the eyes, the whole face cannot be seen. So, because unless with the consent of the, so there are private information that you cannot uh, show. Kasi photos, you already, ay, yun pala siya HIV, ganun. Okay. So, the focus, the purpose of that is because of confidentiality and anonymity of the um, participants. <clears throat> so, how do you do this? So you identify the population who is your target group. You recruit and you train them on the photography skills. They collect the photographs. You ask them to take the pictures. You ask them to give a title and explain what the photos mean. And then you analyze it. And then you edit a little bit the title that they gave to make a theme that's appropriate for academic. <clears throat> then next... Once, that's the first step. The next step is to have a group discussion. During the pandemic, it was easy because we can hold them all together via Zoom. Now, because to avoid, to prevent uh, leaking their identity, what I did was to create a Google Drive and then, and then see, participant one, two, three, four, and then yung last selected photos, yun yung pangalan ng folder. And then I ask each participant to select photos that move them, that touch them, and then to to vote and place it dun sa selected photos na, na folder. And then dun sa selected fold, folder, yun yung, the, those are the photos that I used for the study. Because those photos, yun yung everyone agreed on those photos. So your goal is to ask them to take at least 5 to 10 photos about their experience. And then each one of them will select 5 photos from all the participants. And then the dissemination of findings. Ito parang gagawa ka ng um, collage, mural, or a, uh, how do you say this? Uh, gallery, gallery show. You have to show the portraits. Ganyan. And then, walkway siya, you invite your mayor, ganyan, if kailangan yung politics ang related, if it's for the school, the university president, if it's for the nursing, the dean, because they can, they are the people who has the power to incorporate change. That's for the voice in a nutshell. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I think I already come um so pagfeno it's uh lived experiences GT four times four layers okay ethno culture case study okay you present a report okay so I think I already explained this to you. Okay, ah, uh, ano pa ba? Should... So, if you've, your focus is on uh, understanding a phenomena that is unique to certain people, then that's phenomenology, okay? A GT is if you want to understand the process or behavioral process, social process of a of a certain group or people okay if you want ethno if if it's in culture ganyan uh that's best case study is if you want to to know about a specific case 
that has not been discussed. Factors to consider. Yung research question nyo, is it experiences, is it process, etc. Okay? Then the nature of the phenomena and what are your available resources? If, if you have the literature, if you have the participants, then I suggest you do the interview, right? Okay. 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 Um, I'm not going to discuss mixed methods, but there are ways of, if you're not satisfied with quantity or quality, you can use both. That's mixed methods approach. Merong bago. I did this. It's called, it's a type of mixed methods, not quantity and quality, but it's a multi-phase design. When we say multi-phase design, uh, step one, quality. Step two, quality. I don't want to do quantity. Eh. So, what, so mixed methods, dapat uh, whoever you interviewed or you surveyed, sila din yung as a phase 2 mo. That's for mixed methods. For my multi-phase, the difference ha, is my phase 1 can be stood, for example, can be of different uh, sample size. Phase 1 ko students, phase 2 ko teachers. Mixed methods, phase 1 mo students, phase 2 mo students. Cannot be diverse. So it's more comprehensive actually if you do mixed methods. Why? Because there's already that second um method that validates your first method. Okay. Is it hard? Yes, but it you all research naman is hard if your your heart is not into it. Okay. Okay. Ethical consideration. So, informed consent, you have to always ask permission from your participants. Okay? Confidentiality, by no means can you divulge any of what they said. Okay? Anonymous, you cannot name who they are. So, what are the other ethical considerations? Um. Uh, the for example you can uh when you tell them that they can pull out from the study you allow them to do so do not say ah, hindi po ah, tapos <coughs> tapos na po so um yun po um your study is already with me hindi na po pwede kasi tapos na po yung study. No, you cannot say that. So, do not deceive your participants. And then, make sure na you do not uh, harm your patients. So, you you inform them already if there are uh, you inform them already if there are any conflicts of interest, harmful things that you're going to do. Okay? Um, in the ethical clearance, Sometimes, because some, it's so hard to get participants sometimes. So, uh, especially in the community. So, it is okay to give a token. But that token is after they've accepted. This is not before. So, may nabasa kasi ako comment. Bribery daw. Okay. So, the token is an act of appreciation for joining or participate, participating in your research. It is not a payment for participating. Okay. Then, of course, the culture, be sensitive and be respectful dun sa whatever data you find out if, you have, if there's culture involved. Okay, just a little ano, trustworthiness or rigor. Uh, Lincoln and Guba presented this four dimensions credibility a criteria. First is credibility. The extent uh, to ensure credibility, how do you do this? Member check. What is member check? Again, you go back to the participant, ask them to verify, review the findings and verify and provide feedback. Okay. Transferability. This is when so nursing tayo. 
if in the event I do this in psychology, will I come up with the same thing? If the answer is yes, then you've met transferability. Dependability. The consistency and stability uh, here. So how is it dependable? By making sure you put down the entire step-by-step -step process that you did. So if anyone tries to redo it, uh, they will arrive at the same results. And place in the appendices all your findings. That's how you do uh, dependability. Then last is confirmability. You can do that by member doing member checking and by placing the your reflexivity process at the end. As well as in the appendices, all your results are also there. So, in conclusion, it is very important to select your appropriate research design because otherwise, um, you will have a hard time conducting your research. Okay? So, there are a lot of innovative designs, tools to assist you in qualitative research. Okay? So, it's just a matter of uh, reading uh, to make sure that your research is credible, reliable, and you are able to contribute to the body of knowledge. Okay, so these are of some of my references for this slide, hey, for this study. Okay, stop share. Okay, time out. It's already 10.31. Uh, that actually, my topic is only on research designs, right? I'm not sure if I should discuss data gathering because that would entail more. <laughs> so, ano, should we stop na? Hello?